Hello, pen friends. Welcome to another Currently Inked. And we might actually talk about something currently inked, but probably not. <laughs> uh, welcome. I'm super excited to welcome my friend Lisa Van Ness. You, you have heard me talk about Van Ness pens for a long time. She's the one who makes it possible for me to go to pen shows all the time. And uh, she is here visiting us in the greater Seattle area. We're super excited to have you here for videos. So I'm super excited to be here. This should has been be fun. fun. Yeah. So we are going to answer a metric butt ton of questions. And yes, that is an actual measurement. Um, so I've got a okay. bunch of questions. We did a real quick Instagram live video on the Van Ness account right before we started and got a few questions as well uh, from, from those that group. So we're just going to answer questions. I will probably split this up into two separate videos is my plan. Uh, at least two, maybe three, depending on how many questions we answer. And then... Um, We'll talk, we're going to be doing another video in a little bit that you guys are going to get a, a real kick out of. It's uh, it's pretty funny. So before we do though, I think uh, it's a good time to talk a little bit, a little bit about the mailbag. And this week I got these two pens in here. So um, some of you may know what they are. They've been making the rounds on the, uh, on the internets lately. This is from a Russian company called Bennu. I think that's how it's pronounced, B-E-N-U. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the Briolette version of their pen. You can see it's got this really cool faceted design. They've got a ton of colors. Um, and this is the, I think the Milky Way one. So it's got kind of the purple glitter with the silvery star glitter in the material. I've never seen anything quite like this on the market before. They make their own materials, um, you know, and they're really quite affordable. So, um, yeah, really cool pens. I'll have a review of that coming out in just a little bit. They also sent me this, um, this one and the tips glow in the dark. So I will have to see if I can't figure out a way to record this and set or to photo it in such a way that you can see the glow in the dark experience. But this is the other one. And the cool thing is that these come with, or they don't come with, but you can buy these really cool pen stands where the pen just kind of sits in them. And uh, so it's, they're really cool. I like them a lot. Uh, I haven't, I haven't inked them yet. haven't written with it yet. So I don't know if I like them from a, uh, a perspective. You've taken a look at these, right? Yes, I did. And I mean, we're working with them. We're going to be carrying them because I liked them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we saw them and liked them before mm -hmm. you even said anything to me. Mm -hmm. We've been looking at them. And then now that I've seen them, I'm like, yeah. So keep an eye on the, the mm -hmm. Just Van Ness is the Instagram account. Yes. If you're on Instagram, yeah. Just Van Ness. Uh, and to, to they'll, I'm sure they'll announce them when they come in. Yeah, we're in talks with them now. And I think there's no, there's no, mm -hmm. No reason we're not going to have them. Nice. Should have them in a couple weeks. The other one, um, it's not really a mailbag because it came via Lisa, <laughs> but this is a retro 1951. Now, I'm sure some of you are saying, but Matt, I thought you said you don't use roller balls or ball points. It's true. Up until now, I have not. That's going to change. Ergo, one of the other videos we're going to be recording today, but... Um, I will, that's we'll talk about that a little bit later uh, but this is a retro 1951 it's green and we all know how much i like green but the best part is this it's my kermit the frog I, lisa engraved a little kermit the frog on the back for me so i had to go with kermit well i had to go with kermit <laughs> i had to go with kermit no it was you L loving me some kermit the frog <laughs> let's be real honest so Anyway, that's what's new in the mailbag this week. So I think it's time for us to go ahead and dive into questions. So let's start with an Instagram question then. Yeah. Um, so what is your favorite affordable flex nib? Uh, I'll let you start first. Well, affordable is relative. Mm -hmm. So I guess um, I would say that I'm really happy with the titanium nibs that you can get right now. Um, have you tried any of the titanium flexes? I have. I've not loved them as much as Lisa does. I, I've had some bad luck with a couple of them, but some of them are really, really nice. Once they're, if they're tuned well, they're really great. They're not like a vintage flex. Mm -mm. You know, they're kind of, I, I use the word spongy. Right. You know, they don't, they don't have that really fast snapback that you get with a lot of vintage flex. And I don't think you're going to see that. I don't see that with mm -hmm. the modern pins and I haven't seen a modern pen that has that amount of flex. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, unless you have, but so price point wise, it kind of depends on what your budget is. Cause you know, if you want to stay under a hundred dollars, you can go with the noodlers. They do have drawbacks, mm -hmm. um, but they are fun to play with when they're working. And, um, other than that, I like those. And then you get up into the pricier flex nibs. Mm -hmm. And I think when you get to the pricier flex nibs, then, um, 
affordable is different for everyone. It's, it's, it's a little <laughs> relative. I will say, don't rule out vintage flex, though, because yeah, you can maybe. get good vintage flex for not very much money. Look for no-name brands. Um, you know, stay Third away tier. from the Ever Sharps and the Watermans and the Parkers and that sort of thing, and go with brands no one's ever heard of before. Um, and if you go with a black pen versus a pen in a really cool color, you know, like a black ebonite pen from the 30s or 40s, um, you can get really lovely flexible nibs for not mm -hmm. the, for well under a hundred bucks. So I, I think that's one thing people don't pay attention to a lot. Now I don't know if you have the ability to go to a pen show, but there's always you can always find really affordable flex nibs at a pen show. Tim um, Pearson, he's Tim my Pearson. man. If you go to a show that he's at, he's got this like shelves and shelves <laughs> of crazy. of drawers and each of the drawers is packed with pens and they're all color coded. Uh, if if you've seen the video we did with uh, Tanya Merber draws, we talked about Tim Pearson because she's gotten a lot of her flex pens from him as and well. And that's so. who I actually get mine from mm -hmm. usually because I have several flex and vintage and I, mm -hmm. I'm always happy with Tim and he's always great about talking to you if you're a newbie. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but you know, Make sure that you ask a lot of questions if you do it on eBay. Mm -hmm. If you're buying a pen on eBay as opposed to going to a show, um, don't be afraid to ask for close-ups. Uh, ask for them to uh, show you samples of the writing. Um, that's really important. And then um, finally, the tipping. You know, yeah. like tipping can be an issue. Yeah, with some of these pens, the tipping can wear away over time. And so if you get a gold nib where the tipping has worn away, uh, it, can be, um, it can be pretty detrimental to the functionality of the nib. And getting a nib retipped is not cheap. One other thing to take a look at is, I've talked about them a lot, but the um, there's a, a Spanish gentleman who runs a site called fpnibs.com. Uh, and he takes standard Bach and Yovo nibs, so they can screw into any pens that use those nib sizes, and will shave down the shoulders to create a much more flexible nib. Um, Richard Binder will sometimes do the same thing. Other people will add flex to nibs, but I don't know what the, the FP nibs guy does, but it's not, it's different. Um, so if you go, one of the options you can do is to have him drill a keyhole shaped breather hole instead of just the round one. And if you do that, it adds even more flexibility. I have one of those in my, um, in a custom pen I had made by Renee, my idol in Conway Stewart Evergreen. And it's, amazing. It's really, really good writer. And he also mods the feed to support a better ink flow. So it's not like just, you know, just taking the existing feed. He actually mods the feed to make it flow more correctly. So that might help. And that kind of leads to a question that I got in um, the submission form from Andy at UC Santa Barbara, who says, could you give us an in-depth look at the FP nibs, semi-flex nib? I'll do a separate video about that. But um, so Andy, I just wanted to let you know, I haven't forgotten your question. Um, I'm just going to, uh, I'm going to do it in a separate video. The next question comes from Jonathan in Virginia, who says, how long typically is your average letter? And on average, how long does it take you to write a letter? <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> what? It's pretty funny. Well, yeah, well, <laughs> not as funny as she thinks. Uh, I write somewhat slow and it can take me 45 minutes to an hour to write a three to four page letter, which is my average. Just curious about yours. Yours and mine are almost identical. I'm not a very fast writer either. So I my, my letters are usually about three to four pages long. Uh, and it usually takes me half an hour to 45 minutes to write one. And that's why I have a reply pile that is backed up to September of 2016. That's why I was laughing. <laughs> <laughs> I told them to go to postcards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like maybe if you start getting backed up, that's what you need to do. Postcards or little, little, little cards where there's not much paper. So I for me, I like letters with some substance. I like writing them with some substance. I like getting them with some substance. So um, I like writing longer letters. Plus I'm wordy just in general in life. So really? Yeah. Who, who would have thunk, huh? Uh, so do you, you, do you write much? Write letters much? I, do, I do write some letters. I, I write letters for my kids and for uh, good friends, but I'm not really, I'm guilty of not having enough time to write letters. Mm -hmm. Um, when I was younger, I definitely did before we got so busy. Mm -hmm. um, I even had pen pals, but lately it seems like there's never enough time to do all the things you want. Preach. <laughs> Preach it. Yeah. Okay. Grab another question here. This next one is from John in Sydney, Glenwood, Glenwood, parentheses, Sydney, Australia, who says, if you ignore the aesthetics of a pen, is there a difference in the writing experience for different pens in a brand? 
For example, does uh, a Visconti Homo sapiens feel different to a less expensive pen um, in the Visconti range? So this, for me, this is a big, it depends. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's a real, it depends on the company. I will tell you that one Homo, if, if we're talking Visconti, <laughs> Hugh Rant, if you're talking Visconti, one Homo sapiens is going to feel different from another Homo sapiens. So that might not be the best example because they got not good quality control on their nibs. And, um, and so you never know what you're going to get. Um, they're kind of like Forrest Gump's box of chocolates. Um, you can't even compare Homo sapien to Homo sapien. So yeah. you can't, certainly can't mm -hmm. compare with that particular brand. Mm -hmm. You can't compare, um, you know, Michelangelo to mm -hmm. Homo sapiens for sure. Yeah. So I'll, I'll switch to another brand to, to talk a little bit about that. One for me is Aurora. Aurora is mm -hmm. a, a good example. So they make all their own nibs in house. Mm -hmm. Generally speaking, the feel of the nib, even between the steel and the gold nibs, is pretty, pretty close. I do see a little bit of difference. So things to keep in mind, what's the nib made out of? What's the tipping size? And what is the, um, the filling mechanism? And so if those three things are the same across the different um, pens, generally with most manufacturers, I'd say you're going to get a very similar experience. Mm -hmm. Steel and gold might have a little slightly different feel or 14 karat gold from 18 karat gold might have a slightly different feel. But generally speaking, I think most of the retailers out there have a pretty consistent experience across their lines, I'd even from yes. inexpensive to more expensive. I think the one that sticks out to me is where you're going to see a big jump in, in performance is Pelican. Like their, their lower end pens, they're, they're good riders, but they don't feel anything like the higher end pens. Like if you compare the M200. Steel to, to gold nib. M800, it's just, a, it's even the 400 to the 800. The 400 has a gold nib, but it's, or the 400 to the 1000. The 1000 has a completely different feeling nib than the smaller nibs. So, um, but like Pilot, I feel is, is pretty consistent. Yeah. Uh, uh -huh. Platinum is probably <clears throat> the most consistent nib manufacturer out there in my book. I love their nibs. Me too. I'm trying to think of other. I mean, the other thing is most retailers use nibs manufactured for them by Bach or Yovo. So there's, if they don't adjust them after they get the nibs or have them custom made, there's going to be a lot of consistency even across brands that use the stock nibs. So. There's a lot of people that come in the store and want to try every fine in a particular style. Mm -hmm. So I'll use a... Vanishing point is an example. So we have customers that will say, I want to, like, that. we'll just keep putting another fine nib in there because they do, they feel the differences. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know if it's real or in their mind because sometimes I can't feel a difference, mm -hmm. but they definitely can. So there, there's definitely, um, even within the same style and uh, design, then you will see differences. Mm -hmm. um, it's very subtle. So. Yeah. And I think, I yeah, dog hair. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I always warn people, it's like, there's, there's just dog hair floating around my house <laughs> all the time. It just is what it is. Um, Luke's worth it. I also think that, I'm not going to say this is the case in all cases, but in a lot of cases, I think pen people just imagine differences that aren't really there. I'll say it because they're not my customers. You probably can't say it, but... <laughs> um, Humble Lawyer on Instagram asked, what is the best factory stub nib out there right now? I'm not a stub nib user, so I, I don't really... First of all, I don't think there are a lot of great factory stubs, period. I don't like untipped, like steel stub nibs that you get that don't have tipping on them. I like my stub nibs to have tipping. Um, you thinking of any off the top of your head? Well, my favorites are probably the Bexley. Bexley stub nibs, but those, they don't make them anymore. Yeah, those, those, the, especially the gold ones, those were really good. Those are mm -hmm. some of my personal favorites, and I have them in my personal collection. But I think that some of this is personal taste and also the paper that you're using, the weight of the pen, like all mm -hmm. of these play such a role. It's hard to, it's hard to say. I probably would, I'm terrible at this because my answer is always try 10 or 12. Mm -hmm. Like, that's what I believe. I'm a believer in testing all the pens that you can, mm -hmm. which brings you back to a pen show if you don't have a store in area. Yeah. Um, but I would say my personal favorite would be the stub nib from um, Bexley, the 18 karat ones, or 
I'm actually, I actually really like the Aurora when I can get my hands on them. Mm-hmm. They're hard to find here in the States. And are they stubs or are they, they have a stub too. No, it's not just italics. Mm-hmm. Cause I know they have like really crisp italic nibs as well. Um, which is different than a stub. The one I will tell you to take a look at, I don't know if you can classify it as a factory stub nib, but it's probably as close as I, I get to a factory stub is the SIG nib from Franklin Christoph that they do. Uh, it's, it stands for stub italic gradient. So it's kind of like Jim Rouse's version of a cursive italic. Uh, and they're really good. They're really, really good. Um, he does grind stock Yovo nibs down into it, but they come from the company that way. It's not something you have to do after you buy the pen. So, um, so I mean, it's, it's basically what Yovo would do if they were making that, but they don't. So Jim does it at, at Franklin Christoph before they send the pens out. So I really like Sig nibs. So, uh, Sylvia, this is probably a better question for you than for me. Sylvia from Edmonton in Alberta says, will it damage my fountain pens to write over top of watercolors? I'm worried that the chalky fillers or the pigments in the paint could cause clogging. If that's the case, I may choose to purchase waterproof inks and watercolor over top of my writing instead. Well, I know that Lay does it. Um, it's not something I've ever tried, but I would say that you are taking a chance because it's uh, it can get in between the tines. Well, you know, that would be the yeah, only concern I would have. My only thing is the likelihood of pigments and fillers going up the nib slit instead of down the nib slit, especially if low. you've got the pen inked with, with anything, is pretty non-existent. I mean, even if it did get a little bit clogged, it would only get clogged at the very tip of the nib. Yeah, so you could just floss too. it out with a little bit of, uh, with a brass shim and, and be good. I, mean, I don't think it's um, going to get inside there and clog it. It, it would just, like you said, it'd just be on the end. Yeah. That it would be an issue. Um, and, and it would muddy your color. Yeah. Now, I know a lot of people get watercolor or waterproof ink and then watercolor over the top of it. So they'll do the line drawings with the waterproof ink. That's when we work shows, that's one of the most common questions. What black do you have that's waterproof? Um, so, you know, if you were to do something like, uh, was it platinum carbon black or mm-hmm. one of the detrimentous document black inks, mm-hmm. you R-K. can put that down first or yeah, Roar and Klingner, you could put that down first and then watercolor over the top of it. But I, I think the risk of having the watercolors get back into the pen is really low if you're just sketching over the top of it. So I'd give it a try on a cheap pen first, but I don't think you're going to run into any issues would be my guess. Neither one of us use watercolors a lot. So that's <laughs> I, honestly, I think the bigger problem that you're going to run into is watercolor paper is generally very thick, very porous, and can sometimes leave lint or, mm-hmm. um, you know, paper particles in your nib, which you would then have to clean out. But some people use watercolor paper for fountain pens and don't really have major issues so long as you practice good pen hygiene. <laughs> Luke, Luke, be gone. No one wants to hear you cleaning your paws in the video. <laughs> He's so cute. <laughs> oh. Okay, I may have to interrupt the next question again. You can edit it, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying not to cause editing issues. Oh, that's fine.